everybody, it's Kate Quinn. How are you guys? I hope you're fine. Today is our long arm Sunday where we are gonna show different designs using the long arm on a frame and we're also going to show different designs how you move them. Many of these designs you can do if you're on your domestic machine. You would position the templates basically the same way but instead of moving the machine, you will move the fabric sandwich instead of the machine. So you can do a lot of these designs. A lot of these ideas are, you know, great for whatever machine that you're on, but we definitely want to make sure that we are exposing our long arm users to the amazing Westerly templates and how great they are and how you would use them. How do you hold them? How do you move them? We're still working our way around getting all of this uh, long arm set up. You know, when we come close, this is kind of what we get. So. I've decided that this boundary right here is about as close as I'm going to go today. Um, so that way we won't so have this bumping up into our camera. Um, we are trying a new sound system also. So if you could let me know if the sound is good. A long arm is a little bit loud. So when I'm stitching, I do have some uh, ear pieces in to mute that sound but you will hear the long arm a little bit. So just wanna make sure that you know that. The set that we're gonna to use today is called the Clamshell Starter Set. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's a five piece. It includes one of the templates that you are already familiar with probably from our starter set, from the sampler set. This is the same ruler that is in the sampler set with the other five pieces that's part of the ruler work kit and that piece has been around for a long time i love this ruler it's awesome i wish that it wasn't a duplicate i wish we had a different one but that's just the way it is sometimes we don't get to choose so we're going to show you just some basic designs with this template and then we're gonna show you how we can uh, use the other tools in there and maybe also integrate some different pieces that can work together. So when we're working with a long arm, we still need the same reference lines. This white line that is right here, this first one, the foot will stitch in and the needle will line up right on this line. And any time that we advance to the next row of clamshells, the top of the clamshell will line up on this line. And we'll show you that. This reference line then is when you're offsetting it, right? So if I do this one right here and I sew this in and then I wanna put the offset right here, this center line right there is exactly where that offset should line up. So there's a lot of great markings on this to make it easy. The other thing that I like about it is I can control this ruler with my hand. So I don't need you know, to have this extending way out here. Everything I need to control is right here under my hand. So what I've done is I've got some reference lines and I'm gonna use this top section and we'll put this fill right in here with the three inch clamshell. This is approximately a, about um, 15 inches, give or take. It might be a little off just because chalk markings, but we'll go ahead and we'll start right on the end and I'll put my needle down and it pops right back up and I can just sweep this under there and pull up that bobbin thread right there if I want to. So now I have both of those threads up and I can anchor my needle right in the position that I want to. One thing I want to mention really quick before we get started is I do have my clamps. They're actually, there's one right here. So I'll kind of bring my finger up so you can see. My clamp is right there. I have um, three on this side. I have two plus the extensions on the other side. If I'm working with rulers, I want those clamps on. This has the ability to kind of waffle and shift around. And if I'm using the ruler, I want to reduce that trampolining effect. I want a little more stability on the sandwich. So don't forget to put your clamps on to make sure that the sandwich is secure. Also, I'm just going to press down right here so you could see. This is the edge right here of my ruler base right there. You can see how it kind of has a little hard surface there. 
you should not be doing ruler work without a ruler base on your long arm. If I just put this on there and I don't have this hard surface under there, this can be waffling around and moving around and that's a little bit dangerous. So make sure that you have an appropriate ruler base for your machine so that you can be safe. Don't skip that step. Okay, so this is the reference line. So this first white line right there will hook this right into the foot and will line up right on the reference line. Just like I do with domestic work, I'm gonna really just concentrate on controlling this on the clamshell that I'm stitching. So because this is going to move under here, I need to not press down too heavy. If I press down with all of my might, I'm going to prevent this from moving. This whole thing, including the ruler base, has to shift over in order to sew. So it's important that I have a secure grip, but I'm not trying to prevent any kind of motion at all. So you can see right now that this sandwich actually kind of moves around a little bit. And my machine will just keep stitching and respond to that. So that's why that firm grip is important. What you don't want is the ruler moving against the fabric, but the ruler and the sandwich may move a little bit. As long as we're keeping the foot against the template, it's still gonna make a beautiful design. So let's line up the next side. When you're working with your long arm, watch out for this screw right here. You'll see that my foot is lifting up and down. If I get my finger pinched under that screw, it's very painful. Keep your hands clear of any of the moving parts as you're stitching. If you need to stop and adjust your hand position, then you should do that. And you can just do it like that, just very gently. You can move your fingers out of the way. As you get more experienced, you'll be more comfortable doing that even if the machine is moving. When you start out initially, I recommend not adjusting your rulers on the fly. I want you to stop, turn the machine off, reposition, then you would keep sewing. As you get more comfortable and you know what your machine's gonna do, then you can be more comfortable making adjustments while you're moving. So here, I'm just gonna pull it right down. I don't wanna bump in to this little divot right here, what happens is if I come in really fast, like lightning speed, boom, I'm gonna just bounce right off of that right there. So as I'm coming to the stop point, I'm gonna gradually slow down just a little bit so that I can gently glide right into this stop position and then immediately accelerate to the next arc. Okay, so we'll just keep going, here we go. So some people say ruler work is slow. I don't think that it is. I disagree with that completely. But what I do feel like is you'll get faster. It may start off a little slow, but as you get more skilled, it's going to move more quickly. Right here, I have not let go. I'm gonna advance back up to the center position right in the middle of this clamshell. And you can see I was able to fit five clamshells in here perfectly, so my 15 inches looks nice and clean. When I come back up to the top, I'm gonna stop right in the center position. I'm gonna try to align the needle right with that center. This clamshell at three inches on the base size right here, this height is one and a half. And if I sew up to the top, I've just sewn up one and a half. I'm, I'm at the top right here. So when I want to do the next row, all I have to do is put this into the hook, I'll line up right here on the side, and this center line should line up perfectly right in the middle of these two. So now I have a bunch of reference lines that I can use. I'm gonna tell you a little trick right here. I use a lot of fudging on my domestic machine. I kind of squish fabric, I move it, I shift it. It's much more difficult to do that kind of fudging on your long arm because everything is a little bit secure. I can't really manipulate the fabric the way I might want to. So it's going to be incumbent on me to make sure that my lines are aligned a little bit better. And then if I have to fudge, I have to work with the machine to do it. I can't necessarily move the fabric. I've got to make the machine help me. Right now, I have not sewn this arc right here and I want to go that way. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up. The first white line is aligned right at the top of the clamshell. Let me see if I can just point to that real quick. Right here, right there, this line is lined right up with this first reference line. And right on this side, I'm actually right on this straight line. So I'm going to sew up to the top until I'm in the boundary. And I'll just come back nice and slow. And now I can sew onto this side. Okay, I'm going to look inside the foot, kind of try to make sure I get right to the top of the clamshell and don't stitch down below. And then I can just scoot this over and align again. I'm looking to align the top of those clamshells right on this top center line. And again, only hold the one that you're working on. And then look inside there. Once you're at that top stitch of the previous one, then just stop. Don't go down below. And then I'll just get myself right into the next one. As I'm sewing, the long arm has some swing. It has some weight. So as I push it, especially if I get some momentum, I need to be really careful about tracking around the ruler because the weight of it can actually sort of pull it away from that. So that's why I'm not trying to race around the curve and go at the speed of light. I want accuracy with my template. So I'm making sure that when I'm sewing, I'm under control. I'm not just trying to race through it. I want a pretty shape. Okay. So let's just go ahead, we'll scoot over to the next one. Same thing, checking my line, holding right here, watching out for this moving bar. And then just coming down. When you're on that down slope of your clamshell right here, this is where gravity kind of just pulls you away from the edge. So think about making sure that you're touching the whole way. Right now, I'm gonna stop right at the center position. I'm right in line with this one right here. What do I do? Anybody know? It's a trick question. I think some of you know, you've seen it maybe before. <laughs> so what I want to do is I'm already at the top. When we were over on this side and we were at the bottom, we stitched up to the top to start the next row. But right now we're already at the top. We don't have to do any movement of the machine. We just have to reposition the ruler right on the line, right on the top of the clamshells. So I'll just check my position and then I'm ready to sew. Again, holding right where the clamshell is and controlling that descent down into the valley and moving my hand position for the next one. And nice and easy into there. If your fingers look like they're going to be in the way, scoot them out of there. It's dangerous. So definitely want to watch where your hands are at all times with this machine. It's a little bit different than when you're on your domestic because you tend to be holding the ruler too. So your fingers are a little bit out of the way. This one just seems like he's in a little bit closer. So I feel like I need to be more aware of that as I'm sewing. Let's go ahead. We'll finish this up and we'll just complete this line. This is really to show you what's the, what it's gonna look like as you are stitching this. Can I go alternate directions? Can I change this and sew this way? Of course. If I wanted to sew this way, I could line everything up and I could do that right now, just the same. This would just mean I'm pulling the machine towards me or pushing it back away from me. I can go in any direction just like I would on my domestic machine. One of the things that you can do if you're not aligned, so this line is a little bit on that side, right here at the center position. So if I can't smush my fabric, I'm gonna align this just a little better to make a correction here. I can't correct down on the bottom, otherwise I'm not gonna get this pretty little point right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew almost up to the top, so I'll get aligned. And I'm gonna just stop kind of one stitch short and I'm gonna scoot that two stitches over so I'm right exactly in the line. And then I'll finish coming down. Now this is the boundary right here, so I'm gonna be at the bottom, so I'll go back up to that center position and I can do this top 
layer right there. Get this one in. And I'll just come right back down to the bottom. And now we would just go back across. So at this point, let me talk to you about one thing that's kind of important. Right now, I am almost to the back of my long arm. And part of that is I don't want to be bumping this camera. I don't recommend that you ruler work way out in front of you. I think that you should bring your work close to you so you are not leaning over. You will have a much better ability to apply pressure to your template if you are not leaning over. You want that work sort of underneath you, not with you leaning out in front and not having your body support in order to put pressure on there. So when you're working on ruler work, don't think about doing the whole area. Just work on the space where you are, get it close to you, and then when you have filled up all of this space right here, then you can roll your quilt forward and you can work the next element and you'll be much more ergonomically comfortable, better able to control the design, and you won't feel like crap the next day. <laughs> so that's kind of important too. All right, so let's, we'll finish this up and then we'll just move on to our next design. So this would be a good fill. This one is nice because he's gonna fill this space up pretty quickly right here. If you look, I mean, we've only done a few rows. This space is, let's see, I think it's six inches here, about, give or take, and then side to side 15. And we've been stitching, I don't know, for what, maybe 10 minutes or something like that. So it's gonna fill it up pretty quickly and you can go across a large area. If you want your clamshell to start in the middle and have it even on both sides, what you would do is you would mark the center of your space and on this bottom row right here, you would start in the middle. So if you wanted it centered, let me make some chalk marks. If we wanted it centered like this and we wanted this part in the middle, we could align the center of the clamshell right in the middle on this reference line to put this arc in the center. If you wanted this down portion in the center so that this part right here was the middle, then you would align this right in the middle like that. And then you would just go out to the edge. I would tack it off here and I would come back to the center and sew the other way. Once I have this first row set, then all of the rest of the rows will follow. I don't have to do that again for each row. I just have to do it for the bottom row. You just have to set what your center position would be. And then you could just work this way and the next row work that way and the next row work that way and you could just keep on going. But if you want that center for any kind of fill space or for your border, you're gonna want that first row as the positioner. So that's how you can get your clamshells perfectly spaced in any given space. And then out here, if you have, you know, like say you had something that cuts into this design, right? Some applique or whatever, some cutaway. You can just mark all the way out and keep sewing and then you just end your stitching right there, right? And then you have reference lines that would allow you to just keep on going and go back the other way. There's nothing that says that I can't just cut this off right here, right there, right there. You can do that whenever you want. All right, let's see, what do we got? I think we have one and a half more, right? And then we'll tie it off. So right now, I am pressing down, but I probably need a little more support close to the edge there. Okay, and then here, we'll put the last one in right there. So really cute fill, nice and easy. This three inch is pretty open. This is a good bit of space. There's always room for you to put some fun fills in there if you like to do that. And if you don't, then that's fine too. But clamshells are a really great way to put lots of additional embellishments in. And they're so classic that they really go with any style of quilt. They can go from modern, contemporary, traditional, classic, arty, whatever. And scale makes a big difference. We're gonna actually do a different size um, over on this space right here. So let me point over here. Woo. There's some more space right here that's for a different size. 
What I want to do on this one is talk about if we're doing this clamshell and we have a miter like this, how can we make this design match so that we have it at the corners? So we might scoot over just a little bit so we can make that miter and talk a little bit about that. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm just, I'm just going to mark the miter real quick. So Henny's here. He's been helping me. He got all these lights set up for me, and he's helping make sure that I get all my questions answered. Are there any questions? <laughs> what? You guys have no questions? You know everything? Oh, darn it. I don't know everything. I have lots of questions. Can I ask you? What we're going to do here is we're going to start at the miter for this design. So let's scoot us over just a tiny bit so we can get a little better view of that space. So right now, if I start right here, I can just make this go out from this position. And let's just play with it real quick. I'll just put it on here right there. We'll line it up. And right here, it's going to cross this miter right there for sure. Do you see that? Right now, this is already touching this position. So absolutely, when we sew it a quarter inch away, it's already going to cross over. So if I align this part right there, for sure I'm going to get a little crossover on this side of the border no matter what. I can have that. The way to figure out if you like it or you don't, that would be put your stitching line disc on and sew this one with your pencil and then flip it onto this side and line it up right there. Here you can really see how much it's going over. And then you can sew this one and you know that you're gonna get a little crossover right there. If I don't want that, let me show you another option. Let's line it up like that. And I can sew from that point right there. I can just sew from this miter line and I can just go that way. And I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So what that means is the ruler is telling us that the needle position is right here. If the needle position is right here to go this way, where is the needle position to go that way? Anybody know? Oh man, thank you, Nana says I, I kind of answer the questions <laughs> as we go. I try to, that's good. I'm glad that that's working out. The needle position right here, if I sew this row that way, and then I were to line this up the same right there, ideally my needle position should be exactly the same. This is a 45 degree angle, and there's the same amount of distance right there. So we would basically get our little arc starting right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. There is no rule about this, and there is no perfect match for this you can create a unique center and the key is the random rule uh, explanation. You know, I talk about this a lot. What matters is can you create something that you can repeat on each corner? And that varies based on the length right here. So what we're gonna do is we're, whatever length we can get on this side, that's gonna be our designated length. And then I'm just gonna give you an option over here for how you can do something different, okay? All right, enough talking. Let's pull this up. You guys know how to get your needle out of there. I'm gonna just do some tacking stitches right there. Just move my machine slightly. Pull this away, and I'm gonna hold on to that top thread. And then, let's see if I can get around the camera here. Oh, I can't do it, guys. I'm gonna have to reach in front of you. Give me a second. I'll hold on to this thread and I'm gonna needle down and up. And as I pull the machine away, it's gonna pull that bobbin thread right to the top. And that's gonna let me snip those threads right off of there. Then I can be released over there from that position. The bobbin thread is free, he's cut, and now we can move to our next position. All right, so I'm gonna give you a safety tip now because I am horrible. You guys know how disorganized I am. Don't leave tools on your long arm. When you are working, only leave what you're working on there. Your ruler can slip down underneath and end up under this right here, especially if you put it in the little crack between your top and your bottom layer, and it can just slide down, and then you find it when you hit it. 
So don't put any tools in this area, okay? Keep that area clear. All right, so let's see if we can see what we're doing here. How is that? Should we come over just a little bit more? I think we need to scoot just a little bit, give you a little better view. All right, so you're gonna have to watch my hand in your way again. So I'm right on the corner. This is aligned right on this boundary here, right in the center, and this reference line right along the bottom. The miter is the start point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put my foot right on the miter line and pick up my thread right there, okay? And I'll probably just move this. Right now it'll be easier just to get this out of the way. So I'll get these threads over on this side and then get myself realigned, holding this in place and then anchor the needle, okay? Now, again, I'm just gonna go that way. We'll just sew a little bit, try to get these threads under here so they can be held in place. And come down right to the bottom. Okay, next one, just keep going. We'll just do a couple. We won't maybe go all the way because we don't wanna be outside the stitch field. All right, now let's talk for a second. If this is the end, right, of what I could match on this side, like let's say this side of the quilt is shorter and this side has more space, I can elect to put in as many clamshells as I want. I can cross them over in the middle or not. If I just want a nice even look, I want the same number here and the same number that way, then what I could do right here is I could just be done. And the way that that happens is you just decide. You're just like, okay, I finished the clamshells, I'm done. So I'll just put this on, I'm gonna line it up right here, try to get my line nice and straight, and there, I'm finished, okay? And then what happens to this space right here? Well, then I just put something else in there, right? I don't have to connect these if I don't want to. I can just put some other something in there and then it looks very intentional even though these are different sizes, right? So let's go ahead and let's go back this way. I'll have to hold a little bit differently. This is an important lesson right here. Obviously, if I'm sewing this way and I put my hand right there, that is not very effective, right? I can't really do that. Because of the way the long arm works, I really need my hand to kind of go back on this way a little bit, and I can't sew all the way in. So what I want to do is put a little pressure back here and just slowly bring this around, okay? I can get it lined up, stop, and then I can just change my hand position right there, okay? Once I have a little bit here to hold on to, again, I can just put a little bit here, I'm not racing, and now I can get my thumb back there. And I can get right in there. Now, we're kind of lining these up. We've made some kind of little border thing right here. So what happens right here? Who knows? Let's find out. What we can do is very simple. All we have to do is we can pick a spot, whatever we want, I can actually just sew right into there and I can stop. If I don't like that, how that's gonna look, if I feel like that's too deep, I can just randomly pick a spot, right? And when I'm on the other side, I'll be able to have that same random spot when I do the other side and I'll just make them match, right? So let's see, do you guys like this or do you want me to just pick some other random something or other? What do you think? Okay. Oh, so Honey says we got some time lag, so it's really hard for you to answer in real time. Okay, well, I'm just gonna make some decisions. And again, if you wanted to template this and play with this to see what you're gonna get, you can make that decision yourself. By tipping this, you're gonna get a little less of the arc, but he's not gonna line up. If I leave him nice and straight, he's gonna be the same distance here, which I kinda like, right? So I think I'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll just say this is our spot. And when we come in, let's just hold on to everything. 
Nice, easy pressure. We're going to stop right there. And all we have to do on the other side then is line it up. This right here, this space, we can measure this right here. And that's where our center position is going to be. So let's grab our template, our ruler, and we're going to measure that. And let's see, it's one and three eighths. So then I'm going to mark it over here. Oh, can't do it that way. This is complicated, huh? Hey, Patrick, can you get me one of those little squares off of there? I just need something smaller. Yes, thank you. So this ruler can't quite get in where I need it to be against the back of the long arm right there. So just putting something a little bit smaller there is going to help me get the measurements that I need. We just said we need one and three eighths. So I'll put it right on the corner and I'll mark it at three eighths right there. What is that telling me? This distance and that distance is the same. So this is the center position right here of this dip. So I want that dip aligned right at that spot. And you can see this is where it's gonna touch. So I'll just make sure that everybody's lined up. And I'm touching the ruler and we'll just start stitching. Okay. Now, is that gonna make a little bit of a different shape in there? Sure it will. That's because we just created that. So if you decide that you don't like it, then maybe next time you'll do something different and not do that exact thing, right? But it's just creating some unique little space in there. And then just like we finished this one, I'm gonna come back to this space. We're just gonna go ahead and tack off up there. The only way that you can get the perfectly matched clamshells is if your quilting space is perfectly exactly the same space, this way and that way, if they are exactly the same amount. How many times does that ever happen to you? Even if I'm the most perfect piecer in the world, I can't guarantee that both of those are going to be exactly the same. I can't. I'm just not, I don't know that anybody's that good. You can fudge it. But I think that if you allow the design to just let it be what it's going to be, then you're a lot more flexible. You're a lot less stressed out about what you're going to get. So let's take some of these tools off and follow my own rules so that we're nice and clean. Okay. And I'm going to put the needle right in here. And then I can... Um, tack this right here because I, I do want to make sure it doesn't come out and then I can line this up just like we said right there on that center position this line is aligned and this line is aligned and now we can just sew this little piece right here make sure my fingers are out of the way and I'm going to adjust my hand position now that I have a little room I'll just adjust that okay and now we'll just put the next one in and we'll do that last piece. So if we wanted this to be egg and dart, what's an easy way that we could have this to be an egg and dart? We could do basically exactly the same thing that we just did, but we would have to make one small change in order to get the egg and dart. So right now, this space is three inches wide and we could even make some reference lines to make sure everybody lines up. It looks like maybe he's slightly not perfect, but I mean, they look pretty good. I'm not worried about it. But what would happen is if you want these to overlap, this width has to be narrower, right? This is one and a half to the top of this clamshell and this is one and a half. If we want these arcs to go inside of each other, then we have to create a narrower space for them to overlap. Yeah, Renee, you got it right, exactly so, good job. So this is so simple, we can use this same thing and we just created some funky little change right there to make this happen. And this kind of looks longer, so the fact that that's shorter, I think works just fine to me. 
even better, it keeps this same relationship right here as it does with the other ones, with that narrow space. So there's not a particular rule about how you turn the corner. If you can make something that you can repeat on the other corners and you like how it looks, that's all that matters, right? It's totally up to you. How many stitches? Barbara, I like about five to six with a polyester thread. You probably can get away with four for cotton, but I'm not uh, gonna short it. I'd rather have more to tack off than less. So definitely not two or three. I don't think that holds on any thread. Okay, let's go ahead and tack this off real quick and we'll just show you something else. I got one more fun idea. Well, I have lots of fun ideas, but I only have one more right at this next moment. All right, trim your bobbin thread, then you're disconnected. Once you're disconnected, then you can cut all of these threads and clean up your work area. What this means when we clean up our work area like that is that there are no threads on the bottom right here. This bobbin thread, everything is totally tacked off. There's no threads hanging out on the back of my quilt. Why is that so important with long arming? If I have a long thread hanging down underneath my quilt right now, maybe it'll get caught up in my machine or the wheels of my machine. Don't leave any threads on the top surface and definitely don't leave any threads dangling down on the bottom. For sure, don't do that. They can get caught up in your wheels, which makes the machine not be able to move smoothly. They can get sucked into your machine if you don't have a closed bobbin area, which I don't. So you definitely want to use good process of keeping everything tidy and keeping your workspace totally clear when you're working on your long arm. Um, I saw somebody had a question, babe. Did you see that? So Kathy asked, how do you have your machine set up? That's the current. So Kathy, what, what's the question? Um, I have a long arm frame. My frame is a 12 foot frame. My machine is just set onto the carriage of the frame, just like it would for any long arm that you have. And I do have the benefit of having a large studio, so I have a good amount of space in the front of my machine and in the back. And I also have some overhead lighting right here that you, know, you can see right now. I actually have the machine lighting itself turned off because that creates some flickering on the video. But actually this machine right here has a tremendous amount of light right here that I could turn on and it also has a light ring right here that I can turn on that would illuminate right where you're stitching. Some machines like this even have a laser which points to your needle position. Mine does not, but that is an accessory that you can have with a machine like this. And for some people that's just super useful to be able to get your needle exactly where you want it. So, okay, let's move on really quick. I've got a couple more things I wanna share. We've really only shown you one template. So I just want to show you some of these other sizes that we have. Um, this is like the two and the one and a half. So you get lots of choices right here. So we're just going to play a couple with these. Um, how many stitches? Kathy, I got your question. So Kathy was asking about how is my machine set up? Right now it's set on 12 stitches per inch. I am using regulation mode. Um, I can stitch manual mode, but I do like regulated mode with rulers. I think it's very convenient. Right now, I am set up to be using cruise, but I always turn the machine off. When I'm stopping, when I'm repositioning, I don't leave the machine on. And let me, let me just show you what that means. Okay, we'll just stitch right here real fast, just to show you the difference between precision and cruise. I've got a little line here, so we'll just sort of stitch that line since we can. Okay, I'll put my needle in and I'm gonna put the needle down and I'll actually show you one of the tools from our set and we'll stitch using that just so you can see it. This is a really useful tool that's part of that um, clamshell starter set and this little bump stop right here, that's a quarter inch right there. So if the foot is in here, the needle should stitch right on line with that. Well, I can then line this up right on the line. Right here, this would line up right on the line and right there as well. This would line up right on that chalk line. So then I can just stitch down 
this is what cruise looks like. Okay, so if I'm sewing and I'm moving and I stop, notice that my machine is still sewing, even if I'm not doing anything. Okay, so right now as I sew, my machine is constantly taking some stitches. And many people, they don't like that with ruler work. They want it to stop when you stop. So if you use cruise, what cruise's function is, if you're going on a curve and you're changing directions frequently, I want you to think about cruise as a California stop. That's what we used to say when I was learning how to drive. That would be like where you would like creep up to the stop sign and you would not break, but you would keep the engine kind of coasting, 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 and it would still go and the, then you'd shoom, accelerate right out of that stop. What cruise does is that the engine, the machine is still cycling the needle slowly and we control that. We can make it cycle faster, we can make it cycle slower. Right now my machine is set at 4%. I'm gonna move it up, I'll move it up to 10% and we'll sew that line just a little bit more. So same thing that we just did. Notice how when I stop, it's going a lot faster now, isn't it? Than it was before. So as we line it back up, what happens is when I start going, the machine can rapidly accelerate and catch up with me. That means that now my stitching is just gonna quickly ramp up to whatever speed I'm going. If I start from inertia, from stop, that is precision. So let me just show you the last part. We'll just line this up and we'll sew the last little bit and we'll put it on precision. So I'm changing the settings of my machine. Now if I sew, when I stop, no matter where I am, the machine will stop. Whether the needle is in the up position or not, it will not go unless I am going. So a lot of people prefer that for ruler work, but if you're sewing a lot of curves with a lot of change of directions, you definitely want cruise. And you can change the speed of the cruise to match you a little better. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and move on. So we've shown you this cool straight stitch with this awesome bump stop. Works great on your domestic machine as well. This is where you would line up. If that's your seam, this is the alignment right there. So I love this ruler for that purpose. Okay, so my next little group down here is designed for a two inch. So let's go ahead and we'll use this one. And I'll start up at the top. And the purpose of this particular setting is just to show you the alternate hand positions because we we were going a different direction. Okay, this way you can see what happens if you're pulling it towards you or back away from you if we go in this direction. It's the same reference lines. We're just using the straight lines right there and we'll just go from there. Okay, tack with your machine, a few tacking stitches. If you have a um, handy quilter, BB lock, uh, Janome, maybe Foff, I'm not positive. If I hold the button, I'm gonna just tilt my screen up a little bit. If I hold this needle up down button, I want you to watch what happens when I hold that. We need to see that. Real, a little better, right here. So watch right here. If I hold this button, my needle is gonna cycle up and down very slowly. That is the needle walk function. So many of those machines that I mentioned have that function, which allows you to tack on and off really easily. So that's how I tack. I actually hold this and I count, you know, five or six stitches, whatever. Okay, so right there, we are now tacked in. We've tacked our threads because we're not coming back to that position. Right here, put this in the hook and line up the reference lines so we can start stitching. Let's see, can we see? Let's see if we can change the angle just a little bit so we can get a little bit more of our sewing field. All right, so here we go. Let's see if I don't choke myself on this cord. <laughs> here we go. So I may be a little bit in your way. Right here is where my ruler base is. So this direction down here at the bottom, there's no support for this ruler right there. So I don't wanna hold down there, okay? It's not gonna do me any good. You need to be holding where your foot is. 
right here, nice and easy. Right there, this is getting close, so that might be where I need to make that adjustment so that I can get in to my stop position. You'll notice that we're still in precision right now. I'll sew this whole row all the way down. We'll sew this in precision mode, and then I'll switch it to cruise when we go back the other way so you can see both of those. So you can kind of use that as a little visual for yourself. I'm still kind of holding up near those clamshells. I'm trying to activate these grips right here. And if I need my finger out of the way there, I'll just hold down below. And when I get down to here, I'll just adjust my hand position so I can get right into there. So let's see, I think that's probably, I have one more that I can fit in there, but I don't know if you can see it. Can you guys see it? Here, we'll just come down just a tiny bit so you can see it. Because I want to show you how we shift over. Here is the last one, same thing that we talked about before. So if I want to go up to the next one, I'm going to sew right back to the center position right here. And I would line up my needle right in the middle and then just anchor this like that and finish off this part of the design. So here I have to look back behind here to make sure that I get aligned. So now the visual is not as clear. I actually have to kind of look back behind the machine and make sure I've got everybody lined up. But I actually think that this is a much easier way to sew this way because I feel like I have a lot of good pressure. It's pretty easy to control on this side. And then let's scoop this up a little bit. We'll get lined up right on those lines. So I've got right here the edge of my thumb is anchoring the template right there. Oh, here, let me switch it to cruise now. All right, so now it's easier to get that needle out of the dip right there because it's already moving. So that's why I'm liking that cruise. So that's just something that you can choose. There's no reason for you to do one or the other. Maybe try one and see how you like it. But remember what I said, if I stop, I don't leave the machine on. I turn it off every time. My hand is right there on the handle. You might as well turn it off. It's a safety mechanism. The machine's not gonna do anything that you don't want it to. So definitely, definitely turn it off every time. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll just scoot up and we'll get those last ones aligned. And this is that cruise function right there. So I can sew pretty quickly. I'm right on the center position right here. Let's say I can't get all the way to the center right here. Maybe this is short of the center. If that is the case, then you can backstitch to this one right here. If this is not the middle of that clamshell, then we need an easy, strong visual reference point. So just stitch back until you have it. You can get right into this center position and then I'll just backstitch as many as I need to to get that last one. It's probably only one, right? To get into that um, right there. So touch your seam and then you can come forward and now you can stitch forward and continue the design. So anytime that you can't get, you know, all the way to the very edge, if you can only get to there, then just backstitch until you're in the line because that is the exact height that you need to advance each row. And that's something that you can use on your domestic too. If you are doing an unusual space and it kind of cuts in and out and you can't always get to this center, just go to the one before and then you'll have that perfect reference, okay? All right, so let's see. Um, I did wanna show you one more cool thing that we have. I'm gonna have to scoot us over just a little bit. All right. Let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and just tack this. I could continue sewing, but I think you guys got the idea. And this would just be the same thing. We would just continue when we got down to the bottom here. This would be a full clamshell right there. So we'd stitch back up and finish and we go back the other way. This is four inches. And because this is a two inch base clamshell, this height should be one. Anytime that you're measuring a circular clamshell, whatever the base is, this is half of the circle. So the clamshell is the full size right here on the bottom. If this is a two inch clamshell, then this should be two inches. 
Well, then this distance right here is half of that, okay? All right, so let's go ahead, we'll tack off. Pull your machine away to lengthen that bobbin thread, and then you can just needle down and up in that same position, and that'll pick your bobbin thread up so that you can go ahead and cut those threads. Once I pull the machine away, it's gonna retract those threads, so I can just clip any last little threads that I need, and this is now totally tied off and absolutely clean. All right, so let me show you what we wanna do next. I want, can I have that paper, the skinny one? The, the yellow skinny one? Yeah, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna just make a, a little boundary right here, and we're gonna use our clamshells, and we're gonna make a border that's crazy and fun. Uh, let's see, should we do it this way? I think we'll do it this way. So we'll just put the bottom in for now. How about right there? No, I think that's too low. That will make it hard for you guys to see. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way so that it can lay down. And we're gonna end up having to shift our camera over just a little bit right here. Oh, he's not very straight. What happened? Uh, okay, let me show you something cool about your long arm that'll help us have a nice straight line right here instead of this crazy line that I have. All right, let's we'll scoot these tools off so we can follow my rules. So, honey, can you help make sure all the cabling is gonna come with me too? We're just gonna scoot over a little bit. Okay, one of the unique things about your long arm is that it has a lot of weight. And if I wanna sew straight front to back and often side to side, you can use some channel locks to go ahead and get a very straight line, but oftentimes if you just pull on it, it and you just go straight like this, it's gonna give you a pretty straight line. Okay, so I'm just trying to pull it nice and easy, not be too crazy. I'm gonna have to scoot my light out of the way a little bit. There we go, okay. So let's just keep going. And then I'll just come down right here on the bottom and I'll just mark the rest of it with chalk. Okay, all I did is just pull that over and then I just came straight down. So I'll just erase those other lines because I don't want you guys to get confused. So can I have just that blue little fabric square that's on the first shelf? Yeah. So we've shown you my chalk before. This is my bohine chalk right here. It's kind of fat. It's not very accurate. It's easy. That's why I like it because it's easy. So you'll see if I just kind of go like this or if I use my little lint roller, anything like that, I can just get that off pretty easy. And now I can use that as the reference line and I can say, okay, we need three inches. So let's go ahead and get the machine out of there. Cut the thread so we can start where we need to. So I'm just gonna move this over here and I wanna show you something real quick. I'm gonna just hold, hold my machine right here and I'm gonna let go. Notice how my machine isn't moving at all, at all. It's like totally right there. Like if I just go like this, what does that tell you? This tells me that my machine is perfectly level. It doesn't tip this way, it doesn't tip that way, it doesn't slide forward, it doesn't lean to the back. What is important about having a level machine is you are not having to work as hard. If my machine is constantly pulling forward and then I'm having to control it and push it back all the time, it's very tiring and your machine has weight, so you'll definitely feel that. So if you notice that your machine is constantly drifting one direction or another, then it might be important for you to take a little time to level the machine. That will help you not have to work as hard. So there is some good value in making sure that your machine is level, okay? All right, so enough talking, let's start stitching. I'm gonna just scoot this back and I'm gonna try to put a nice little boundary in here for us now that is straight, <laughs> or pretty straight. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna use the three inch clamshell and the reason I'm gonna start with that again 
is there are some awesome things in this set that really work together well. So let me show you. I'll pull them up onto the uh, camera. So we already showed you this one a billion times, right? So we'll set that one aside. Guess what? This one is also three inches, but it's shallower, right? So we'll set that one aside and then look at this one. Also three inches, but kind of in the middle. So let's play with this one really quick. And we're gonna sew a little border right here using that reference line real quick. So needle down and up, that'll get your bobbin thread up to the top. And then anchor that and tack your thread. Okay, we can leave those, they're not gonna bother us. Let's just sew as many of these as we can. Make sure that your grips are down. I think it's much easier to stitch if you have your grips properly against the fabric. So I have, my foot is pushing against the ruler, my hand is pushing back, and I've got these two points right here, and I'm also trying to make sure that I have this pressure near the foot. I don't want any pressure down on the back right there. Okay, so again, So I'm activating this grip right here. And I think I can probably get maybe one more. I'll just sew one more. Okay. Now these rulers are pretty accurate, right? This is that three inch and let's go ahead and we'll do the next one. We have the same reference lines. This width right here is three inches. So it's a perfect matchup for the one that we just sewed. I can check right here that my align, my line is aligned. And if it isn't, this is the same place that we could make that adjustment. We'll make it right here in the middle and you could make a little microscopic adjustment if you needed to, okay? But it's getting us right into the center of those two. And now this one should be aligned perfectly as well. And here we go, right? And then we'll just keep going this is a nice, easy, continuous design, and it gives us this really pretty swag right here. Huh. Hey, Patrick, could you go back there and just wrap that thread? It's got some kind of weird, like, see how it's hanging down so much? Just kind of wrap it up around there. So for some reason, my spool has got like a little dangle of thread hanging down. I don't want it to catch on anything, so Honey's gonna tighten it up for me. Let's do this last one and we'll show you what we have. And this is just two templates that are in this set, okay? That's fine, that's good. It's right, that's what it is. It's those right there, it's supposed to go into each of those. Okay, all right, so anyway, this is the squat oval. Right, so there's your oval right there. It's half of the oval and it's squat right there, right? So this is a little shallower, but you still get that three inch on the edge like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's add one more. This one is a little bit trickier to use. It does have the center alignment position, but it doesn't have a nice easy line to say where the quarter inch is. So there's a little bit more fudging with this one, but it still looks amazing. So you can see right here, I can't line it up exactly right on the quarter inch. So this might be a good place for you to grab your spacing gauge real quick if you needed it. And you can just line this up and you just wanna be a quarter inch away as you sew in. So again, if I'm off a little bit right here, this is where we make the adjustment, right in the middle there to get yourself a nice smooth arc right there. So I'm right in the center position and I'll line these up again. Okay, and then line up the next one. And I love this, I think it looks so pretty. And this is the template starter set. So this one is the same one that has that straight bump stop. And then it also has three inch wide, very shallow arcs. So this one can also be used for any kind of scalloping. It's a wide arc, but it's fairly shallow. But look how awesome it looks, isn't that pretty? 
Okay, now we're gonna be totally crazy and we're just gonna pick some random template and we're gonna make this even fancier, right? So we used the three inch clamshell, which is the CC2-H. This is in the clamshell starter set or in the sampler set or the ruler work kit. Then this one is the squat oval clamshell number one. And the H means this is half size. Let me just show you that real quick. See how it says H? If I just bought the squat oval, it's actually longer, right? But in this set, you're getting some of these little shorties. And I actually like them because I can hold them really well. But the big ones are nice too. So this one has two different sizes, but the three inches on this side, that's what the green arrow is pointing to, right? So we use that one, we use this one, and now we're gonna use our straight edge. Each time as we sew down, we're gonna stop right here in the middle and we're gonna add something cool. Ready? Okay, line it up. This edge right here should line up right on the straight line right there. That's how we know that we are a quarter inch apart. So that'll get us right down here to the bottom and I'm stopping right in the middle of those two. Now, let me grab my other template and I'm actually gonna show you two different ones. Let me grab one more. Hey Patrick, can you bring that box a little closer? There's something in there that I, yeah, I just wanna grab something out of there. Thank you. I'm not gonna use this one, but I want to compare it for you so you can see why I made certain choices. We're going to use this spin effects number 11 to add to this border. The reason that I'm choosing this one and not this one, this one has a longer narrow neck. So what it means is that this is not gonna cut into the existing clamshell. When I tried it with this one, this one does not have a long enough neck and this would end up stitching into the clamshells. So with a very deliberate choice, I'm gonna use this one where the neck is extended, very skinny right here. So basically, it's gonna come down and it's not gonna curve until it clears those clamshells. So we're gonna put this as a little embellishment into our swag and make it super fancy. Okay, I do have my little key right there. Very easy, just pull that. And this guy will just come right up. Put it on. I'm gonna scoot these tools out of the way so that the templates are not on the, the uh, work surface just like we talked about. And then make sure that you have this nice and taped securely, okay? So right here, as I line this up, there is a center line right here on the bottom where this is perfectly along the bottom reference line. And then if I am, I should be squared up this way, right? And if I'm a stitch or two off, I can kind of look in there and I can actually readjust to make sure that visually things are right in the middle. And let's just sew this one real quick. I'll show you what it looks like. So as I sew it, I'm gonna just easily follow around with the foot. And if it gets close to my finger right here, I'll just widen my hand position and sew in down to the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you this crazy random thing that you can try. I cannot guarantee it will work perfect for you. It's gonna work better the more control that you have. Because this machine can move, I can turn it on and I can line this up along the line like this and I can stitch right along until I get to the next one right there. There is a line right here that I was following as I went. If you want your line 100% perfect, that's probably not gonna do it. But if that's good enough for you, then you can do that. You could also use your arcs to travel. If you want no line right here, when you do the last arc, you can arc to here, put this in, arc to the next space, put it in, arc to the next space, and then there's no line on the bottom. So there's lots of different ways you can travel. Right now, then I'll check that center position, make sure I'm in the middle, so right here and right here, I've got the same amount of visual of the stitch line of the clamshell on each side, and it's less than a quarter inch. So if I put my quarter inch spacer right there, I know that I'm not gonna stitch into it with this design. So again, stitch up the one side, 
follow this arc nice and easy and then do this side and come right back to your center position. Then I can just start the gas and I can just walk along there like that, keeping my line aligned and I can put the next arc right in there. Now I can't do this on a domestic machine, but I certainly can make this design on a domestic machine. Okay, don't you think that looks awesome? It's so pretty. So any questions? I've been talking for a while. I'm gonna just pause for a second and see if we have any questions or comments. All right, honey's keeping up with it. He's, he's keeping me straight. So here, the ruler is being pushed by the foot because right here, this is holding that foot very accurately. There's not very much room. It's cupping right around the foot. And so now that just moves me right along that line very, very easily. And then I'll get lined up and make sure I'm right in the middle of the space and I'll sew the last one. Okay, and here I'll just tack it off so you can see, I'll just go ahead and take my uh, machine out. So just scoot this out of the way, then I can pick that thread up and scoot back. I want to, go ahead, honey. I was just going to say, Linda asked, how would you do this on a domestic machine? Right? Um, so, so Linda, you can just use your straight edge and you can just sew to the next point or you can put the arc on. So like say we did these two clamshells, so we went out and we went back. Then when you're doing the last arc, you can stitch the arc across to each position and you could do this one in between each time. So let me see, I think I cut my thread really short. Yes, I did, darn it. Okay, I'm gonna show you two things. Right now, with your long arm, this bar right here is the foot holder. This foot is pressing down tremendously with tension. If I want to lift up the foot so I can get my ruler out, I can hold right here and I can actually pull really hard and I can slide that out. Many people do not realize that this bar moves a little bit. It does lift up. It's got a lot of pressure, so it takes some pulling to really get it up in order to do that. And that's where some templates might have a little slot, but you might have to take them out. I can only do it when my needle is in the up position. So real quick, let me three thread with no light here. Oh my goodness. We'll see how good my eyes are. Slide your thread right down your needle groove and he can go right in and he's already threaded right there. I just slid it right down the groove and he just popped right into that needle. So there's not a lot of machines like this that have some kind of special threader. This is a round needle and it has a big groove in the front and I just slid that right down the, the uh, groove and it just popped right in and it threaded the first time. So thank you to Jan who taught me that. <laughs> I'll give her credit, Jan Stevenson. Okay, so let me show you what I was talking about. If I have my ruler and he's under here, I just wanna show you this one more time. If my needle is down, right now there is no room right there for me to really pick this up, right? I, can, I can't lift this right here if my needle is in the down position, okay? So what I would have to do in order to lift up this presser foot I have to bring the needle up first. Then I can lift this and I can take that ruler out. That needle essentially anchors this in the down position. So whenever you're moving rulers, if you have to get the needle to the top position so that you can raise that presser foot and it does take some work from you in order to do it, it's hard. Okay, so I'm just gonna scoot this out so you can see our pretty little design that we made. So the key for this one was knowing that I wanted this to be skinny for a while. The other one it, that I used that spin effects for, it would cut into your clamshell a little bit. Now you can have that, I don't care, I just didn't want that for myself. 
So I was trying to think about what I could do to get this to kind of arc around a little bit. You see how skinny it is and love that. And if this was your boundary and you didn't want a little gap, then you can just put a little arc from corner to corner right here and you can just close that. It doesn't have to be open like that, but it can be. And then you could also do straight lines down in between if you wanted to. So pretty. So, so it's such a fun design and not really complicated. And again, you could make it start in the middle and work out to the edge. And then if you couldn't make these corners match, you could make this go on the diagonal if you wanted to, or you could just put a cornerstone that is different and leave it. You don't have to make them match, right? If that's important to know that you can make those decisions to meet whatever you need for your design. So let's see, I have one more thing I wanna share. So we've shared a lot of different templates that are in this. We showed the, there's a couple small ones. Let me put up the ones that we've shown already. This one with the bump stop, we've demoed that one. And then this is three inch, it's very shallow. It's only a half inch deep, but it's really, really pretty. And it does have those center markings. And I'll scroll this up, I'll show you, cause I got some of it stitched right up there. This one is the squat oval and you get the two different sizes, right? And then this one is the two and the one and a half, I, I think, pretty sure, right? So we've shown you that one as well. I think we have two of the same one. Oh, and then of course this one. And then the last one that's in here, we have not demoed it and I'll just do it uh, in this space right here just so we can show you what it looks like. So again, cleaning up as we go. Don't leave stuff on your long arm. It's not good juju. I saved this one for last because he has two different um, looks to him and I actually have different grips on there. These are the Sarah Diddy butterfly grippers and I actually don't recommend using them this way because this is thinner than this. So you definitely would wanna use just one or the other, not both of them, but anyway, they're on there already, so I was just gonna go with it. Make sure your grips are down. It's the same thing that you want. You wanna get those reference lines aligned. This one is a little different. Um, this is gonna be my center line right there. The foot will dip down right there. So you're gonna look for this line right there. And I'll just show you what this looks like. I do think that these ones are a little harder. Anytime that you have a really narrow distance, you need to bump up your stitch regulation to a higher number. So we said we were stitching at 12 stitches per inch. I'm gonna put it up to 14, maybe 15 as we sew. And I'll line it up right on this line as well. So let's see if we can kind of stretch out a little bit and get us a little closer there. I'm gonna try and bring the camera just a little bit closer. So give me just a second. We'll be kind of on the side a little bit, but that way you can see a little more closely. Okay, here we go. Again, anchor, if that's your start point, make sure your needle's down, then your machine's not moving around. And I'm gonna raise my stitch up to about 15. When I line this up, I'm gonna line it up just like we said. Um, actually, I'll do it this way. I think that's gonna be a little easier to actually have it inside. And then you wanna stretch your hand out, pressure on the ruler and pressure off right? You need both of those so that you can definitely see what's going on. Okay, here we go. So I can't get my finger like right up in there, but you see how we have to go a little slower right here. We can't just race around these really tiny points. What's happening at the very top of this little arc is that there's very little purchase for the ruler foot, right? So we can't race around that. We have to just go slowly. Okay. Let it sew nice and easy. And just gently kind of bounce out of that center position right there. So I have the three points of pressure. My hand is wide. I've got pressure on the sandwich, on the ruler, and then I can just scoot back down. Same thing like we did before. This is a little bit trickier to kind of be right at the very top and aligned. 
right there when you want to go back the other way, but you can still do it. So again, you've got all these reference lines right in the middle, and if we need to make an adjustment, we can just do that pretty easy. Dip right in there, and then checking your reference lines, making sure the top is aligned right on the top of your clamshell. Sometimes that means you gotta lean in there and kinda look inside the foot. Okay, now right here, I've got a lot of pressure over here, but not as much here. So I'm gonna adjust my hand position so that I have the pressure that I need. Because these designs are so much smaller. There's the bump stop right there. And then I can just scoot that over and that should let me finish out that last one right there. Okay, oh, looks like I went awry. Maybe he needed to come down a little further. <laughs> oh, he did, look. He did need to come down further. These aren't lined up. Okay, so in my mind, I'm only gonna use the last one. I'm not gonna stitch over to there. I'd use this for alignment, but I would stop sewing right there because that's too tricky right there. But aren't those cute? I love that size. I think they're pretty. Um, let's go ahead and we'll just do a tiny bit of this squat oval on this side just so you can see the size and then we'll be done for today. Always use your ruler foot, right? He's a perfect quarter inch echo for you. So you can always use your ruler foot anytime that you need to. It's totally worth doing. And then let's just go ahead and line this up and we'll put some of these in here. So these ones are nice and flat. You don't get that same issue that you have with the long skinny ones. These ones are still needing to have pressure, so adjust your hand position as you go. And you can use the same rule. If I need to, I'll just come back to the center position right here in the middle, and then I'll do half to get a line right here, and then come back, and we'll go this way. So these are pretty shallow. These make great fills around an applique space. And they're a little bit more of a kind of almost a modern look, I would say. So once we're in the center position right there, we can just go all the way into the hook and line up the tops. And then you can sew the next set of them. Always with the clamshell, you've got to get out of the dip so when you're sewing, just gradually work your way out of the dip, nice and smooth, and that'll help your design be as smooth as it can be. These are gonna look a lot different. These are much narrower this way, but they have more width this way. So they're just gonna change that look a little bit, and those can be great fills for any kind of space. So at this point, I am done. I pretty much showed you all my cool stuff for today that I had prepared. So, do we have any, any questions? No. Alrighty, so as usual, we will go ahead and uh, post this, but again, all of these designs are available to you on a domestic machine or on your long arm. We're just trying to really let people see some of the hand position and some of the machine usage with a long arm. So, I kind of felt like today went a little bit smoother. We're kind of getting our long arm wings as in terms of photography. Uh, a little smoother and hopefully our sound was good for you as well. Um, please let us know if there's something that we could do better. We're definitely interested in making sure this is a good experience for all viewers and I hope you guys have a great weekend and happy quilting. Enjoy. Bye-bye you guys. <laughs>